finished product, as you can see compared to one that is not heat anodized. Both sides have this nice purple look to it. Reacts well with sunlight. Looks much better than the uh, original. Yet another finished product. This one's got a little bit of purple towards the bottom. Blue towards the top. Came out real good. Um, there is what it looked like originally. Slightly different clip, but same company. And as you can see, the markings on this one are black. And when you heat anodize it, the markings kind of change a little bit to the point where they burn off, but you can still completely see everything. So it's just a little more hidden actually improves the look quite a bit so hey what's up guys so got something that I've been meaning to get for a while and that is a propane blowtorch and now that I have that I've been messing around with anodizing steel um, so anodizing is something you can do to steel or titanium to change the color um, by heating it up to a certain degree and uh, I personally think that's a useful thing to do when it comes to like pocket clips or carabiners or whatever steel items that you have where you kind of want to change the color uh, for example like these bench made pocket clip pocket clips were a high shine high polish uh, stainless steel so I'm not a big fan of that kind of a finish so you know, hit it with some heat, and now they are, this one's pretty dark brown. This is a lighter, lighter brown with hints of blue in it. Um, but uh, what you're essentially going for is something like this. Get like a real vibrant blue or purple, purple look to it. But um, I'm pretty sure with steel, that's incredibly hard to do. Plus, once you even get that purple or blue, like you saw in the beginning of the video with these carabiners and S-beaners, like once you get oils on them, like even from your fingertips, it just, it dulls down quite a bit. So I'm not sure what material these forceps are made out of, but I'm pretty sure it's not steel because I'm pretty sure all steel is magnetic and magnets will not stick to this. So I'm not sure what material is made out of, but it really does pick up a good anodization. Um, one thing to keep in mind is um, when you're working with different steels, you are going to get different results. For example, <clears throat> the uh, two pocket clips from the Kershaws um, got fairly similar results there. These uh, Benchmade pocket clips were a very different result from that of the Kershaws and these two these two carabiners also had very similar results to each other but different results from the two uh, different types of pocket clips. Um, and I got a completely different result from this Spyderco pocket clip right here. But, um, and as you can see, even on this Benchmade thumb stud, I got a very vibrant purple out of that, so I got a very different result from that. But um, I'm not sure what controls all the differences, but um, I'm sure, pretty sure finish has something to do with it, but maybe the composition of the steel has something to do with it. Um, but definitely the finish, I'm um, pretty sure has a lot to do with it. So like a high polish is going to react differently than a bead blast, um, so on and so forth. Um, but uh, yeah, you want to keep that in mind. Another thing you want to keep in mind is probably the fact that adding a bunch of heat to the steel might change the strength of it. Um, so I don't know if like heat, heat anodizing is going to affect the strength of the pocket clip to the point where it might bend out easier. But for example, on this one, when I, uh, he anodized it, the, the gate actually weakened to the point where it was no longer useful. This is the actual gate that weakened and I traded it out for the one on this carabiner but this is the one that I actually use on my keys so I needed to have a strong gate because I don't want to lose my keys so uh, when I heat anodize this the gate weakened to the point where I consider it um, no longer useful because I wouldn't trust it to hold my keys so keep that in mind 
you might also weaken the strength of some of the steels that you might be working on when you're heat anodizing. Another thing to keep in mind is everything in this video <clears throat> is going to have more of like a tan or brown look to it um, because the lighting conditions in here aren't that great. At the end of the video, I will attach something where I'll take everything outside and you'll be able to see everything in daylight conditions and natural light conditions where, and that's more where all the uh, blues and the purples come out. So, but yeah, but even in this video, you can see the noticeable difference between the anodized and not anodized uh, pocket clips. These are the exact same pocket clip. This is a Kershaw Skyline on top with a Kershaw Thermite on bottom. And the Skyline actually has a repurposed Thermite pocket clip, um, which I customized to fit the Skyline. So it, they actually have the exact same pocket clip, but the one on the Skyline is anodized and the one on the Thermite is not. So you can see the big difference there. Um, here's another couple. This is the actual original Skyline pocket clip. And this is a Kershaw Select Fire, and they have pretty much the exact same pocket clip. The finish was the same before I anodized the Skyline pocket clip. You can tell there's a pretty big difference. Um, this one's mostly tan with a little bit of blue maybe during in, in the sunlight, but uh, this one actually has a decent amount of blue, which... Maybe you can see in this video, but you'll you'll see it later in the uh, sunlight. But uh, when it comes to the process, what I do is I take these forceps and I clamped a little paper clip in the end. And what I can do is take the pocket clip, put it on like so. Now I just take the blowtorch and heat it up slowly. You know, moving the flame around on the uh, pocket clip as not to create any hot spots but um you slowly do that and then the pocket clip should start going through the colors and what generally happens is it starts to tan and if you want to have a tan pocket clip you can stop right there and then it should go through purple and then it should go to blue and that's where theoretically it should stop but um Generally, I feel like if you go too far, then it's just going to kind of burn, and then you're going to get more of a brown out of it. So, I think this is more of a trial and error thing, so you guys might have to try it on your own, but to my experience, it's it's pretty hard to get those purples and blues. It kind of passes right by it pretty quick, and then you just get like a darker color. Um, so, yeah, you guys are going to kind of try it on your own, but um, I'm just letting you know like the basics on what to do and how to do it but um yeah make sure you definitely clean your surfaces steel surfaces with alcohol 99 percent or this work just fine 70 percent works just fine i like this one because i put it in a spray bottle it makes it a lot easier to cover the surface than just wipe it down get all those fingerprints off get those oils off otherwise you will have blemishes once you're done with the anodization um but yeah uh, that should essentially cover everything. So next, I'll just show you guys the uh, outside video of what the all these pocket clips and everything look like out in the sunlight. But I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, just post them down below. Um, I'll also probably be linking a uh, video, the video that gave me the idea to make this video, um, down below. Um, I think it's JT's Knife Life. Uh, the guy made a video on titanium, um, titanium anodization. I figured I'd make a steel one, but, uh, the guy knows a lot more about it. Uh, he has probably better information than me, so might as well go check out that video. But, uh, thanks for watching. Right, so here's a little bit better of a look of everything outside. There is the thermite pocket clip with the, uh, Skyline pocket clip that I readjusted from a thermite pocket clip. There's three SB nerves. Uh, the one on the left was anodized for longer than the one in the middle. The one on the left looks more brown. The one in the 
middle looks more purple, the one on the right's not anodized. Here are the tweezers with mystery metal. Not sure what the metal is because it's not steel, because it's not magnetic, and I'm pretty sure steel needs to be magnetic. They were super cheap, so I'm sure they're not titanium, but they anodize real well like titanium, so I'm not sure what it is, but that shows much better color than anything else that I have attempted to anodize. Um, there is the uh, Spyderco pocket clip. Not sure if it's going to show up well in the camera, but it's kind of got like a rainbow patina to it. And that's in comparison to what it started as. There's the black pocket clip and there's the heat anodized after it's been sanded and polished. Or not completely, but there is a Benchmade pocket clip that used to be a mirror polish, essentially. It was a high polish stainless steel. Now it's a dark brown, not showing really any color besides brown. And here are the two Skyline pocket clips. One on a select fire and one that's an original Skyline pocket clip. Look, this one looked exactly like this one before I anodized it. <laughs> and the best part is this thumb stud with the purple and the blue speckles. All right, before I finish this video, I just wanna show you guys one more thing. Um, these are titanium beads. All four of them used to be the same exact color. Just wanted to show you the heat anodizing on titanium. So these two beads used to be exactly the same and now uh, as you can see, one is blue, these two beads used to be exactly the same, and this one I did a little more heat towards the bottom, a little less towards the top, so it's got purple up top, blue down the bottom, but uh, as you can see, for titanium you get much more vibrant colors on the heat anodizing, so just want to show you guys that, and I also want to apologize about the uh, Benchmade clip on the uh, Spyderco knife. I'm sure some of you knife guys are cringing at that, but uh, it was a cheap way to get a deep carry clip on a Spyderco, so took a little uh, adjusting of the holes, but got that on there. But uh, yeah, that should do. Once again, if you guys have any questions or comments, post down below, and thanks for watching.